Readings once again for the part one of the study of the Holy Spirit, doctrinal study of the Holy Spirit. So this is, we have seen the introduction in the first place and now we are, what we are going to see is the deity of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is God. That is the deity of the Holy Spirit. As we have seen in the doctrinal study, the deity of Jesus Christ. Many people, they don't accept Jesus as God, but Jesus is the second person of the one triune God and the Holy Spirit is the third person of the one triune God. So let me read out a portion in this. Okay, from the book of Acts, the Apostles, Apostles, chapter 5, 3 to 4. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back for yourself part of the proceeds of the land? So while it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not at your disposal? Why is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to man but to God. This is an incident. It happened when the body of Christ or the church, we can call it church, is only one. It is not multitude as people are speaking. The church is only one, which is the foundation of which is Jesus Christ and the builder is Jesus Christ and the head is Jesus Christ the church the body is called the body of Christ the church or which is called the fellowship of love in Christ that is what the church is so this is an incident when the church was at the infant stage one couple they came and they played the hypocrisy many people they sold their property and put the money at the feet of uh, the apostles and they were also selling their property like others but they keep back part of the in part of the money that was sold and brought part of it and put it at the feet of the apostles that apostle was peter so peter was given the discernment by the power of the holy spirit and when Peter asked them, see actually people say they died because of uh, the money matter. No, they died because they lied to the Holy Spirit. God does not want his bride, the church, to be corrupted when it is at the infant stage. So God manifested. Both of them died on the spot. They fell and gave up their spirit and they died and they were buried on the spot because Peter very clearly says you lied to the Holy Spirit that means they were not aware of the fact of Holy presence or the Spirit of God within the body of Christ if the same thing is happen how the churches today would be purged many people they are who they are serving as the servant of God, man of God, will fall prostrate dead in the presence into the church. They may have to be buried, but God is patient concerning them. So the Spirit of God is present. That means the Holy Spirit is the Lord within the church and Jesus Christ is the Lord over the church. So we should know this the true body of Christ which is going to be translated when Christ come in mid heaven would be translated and into that people should be part of it. They are the true Christians. They are the true children of God. Everyone is having the spirit of God into that body. Actually that is dispersed across the whole globe. Okay. So no one knows who is in that but the one who is in that he definitely knows about it because of the presence of the Holy Spirit so the whether you have the Spirit of God or not is the true test 
whether you are a child of god whether you have been saved not otherwise many people they think that assurance is something that if they take uh, immersion pan baptism and they are uh, of assured of their salvation and forgiveness of sin no that is wrong so having the spirit of christ that is the holy spirit in you is the assurance of salvation so in dealing with anania so an incident i read anania and safira they sold the property brought and they told lies in the presence of the, the apostle peter in dealing with ananias peter revealed the deity of the holy spirit when he said ananias why hath satan filled thine heart to lie to the holy spirit holy ghost thou hast not lied to men but unto god so that is what the topic the holy spirit is god himself that is the triune god third person of the one triune god in this scripture it is very clear that holy spirit is god and he is co-equal co-equal with father and co-eternal with father and son and co-existent with father and son so he is co-equal and co-eternal and co-existent with father and the son jesus the christ okay his deity is also set forth in set, set forth in that he possesses divine attributes so if he is a god if he is god he should possess divine attributes so he is everywhere present in the universe in the entire universe he is present everywhere in the universe so present everywhere means omnipresence omnipresent he is present everywhere so of course all the religions say god is everywhere but he is not in everything he is not in the stones he is not in the wood he is not in the statues but nothing is unknown to him we will all read a passage from this psalm 139 7 to 10 where shall i go from your spirit or where shall i flee from your presence if i ascend to heaven you are there if i make my bed in sheol you are there if i take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me this is not only proving that the holy spirit is everywhere or he is omnipresent but it says it can lead us it is a comforting thing wherever you may be wherever you may be working or wherever you may be placed let us be content there with because we are under the care we are under the knowledge of our lord and savior jesus christ and his spirit who is called the holy spirit okay he monitors we are under the surveillance of holy spirit and the world is going to be under the surveillance of something else when after receiving the corona vaccine but we will be under the surveillance of the holy spirit the spirit of christ and point number 2 is he has all power that is also a divine attribute luke 135 and the angel answered her the holy spirit will come upon you this is this word speak about mary how jesus was uh, born the holy spirit will come upon you mary and the power of the most high will overshadow you therefore the child to be born will be called the whole called holy the son of god so this is with point number 2 the divine attributes he has all power so people will mistake about the birth of jesus christ many have spoken even the jewish leaders have spoken bad about christ but this is the fact jesus christ is otherwise called the seed of the women so there is no seed of women which was promised at the fall of mankind and at the fall the promise which was given to adam and eve or the entire mankind is the seed of the women so all through the history of this world 
over 4000 years and God was seeing after that and Mary he conceived and he bore a son who is called the son of God or he is Jesus he is the savior he saves his people from their sins and he is son of man okay and he is also called Emmanuel God with us so the point number three is Holy Spirit has all knowledge that is we can know from 1st Corinthians 2 10 to 11 I am reading this is the Pauline epistle this thing God has revealed to us through the Spirit for the Spirit searches everything even the depths of God for who knows a person's thoughts except the Spirit of that person which is in him so also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God so the third thing he has all knowledge that is omniscient omniscient they will say omniscient he knows everything nothing escapes his attention in attention in the entire universe so we saw that he was present everywhere that is omnipresent and second one is he has all power omnipotent and third one is he has all knowledge nothing escapes his knowledge in the entire universe that means omniscient so these are the three divine attributes of God and fourth is he is eternal see let us read it this is in the aspect of uh, service we need how much more will the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God purify our conscience from the dead works you just take it carefully to serve the living God to serve the living God one person's conscience must be cleansed from the dead works if I am just asking one question to all those who are serving have have you had your conscience cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ which was shed down poured down for the entire world through the eternal spirit then only you can serve the Lord without having your conscience cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit no one can serve him that is what the word of God says so it is very essential then how much more for the other religion including Christianity see and there were animal blood and there were Christ blood and this is a very great subject to be discussed out but the now my purpose is the part one after the introduction part one of the Holy Spirit which is about his deity he is a eternal spirit so with the help of the Holy Spirit Jesus Christ he shed his blood and that blood can cleanse our conscience see the differences in the Old Testament of the sin was covered but in the New Testament our sin has been cleansed once and for all it is never to be remembered again by the Lord God that is the greatness that is the greatness with this assurance we should go forth and serve the Lord so his the Holy Spirit's deity is revealed in that his name is coupled with the equality with the name of the Father and the Son okay and now also he is revealed see in the one the baptism of the believer <coughs> the baptism of the believer Matthew chapter 28 19 Jesus gave the command this is called uh, to the great commission to all the apostles and all those who are called thereafter go therefore and make disciples of all nations all nations are under the monitoring or under the surveillance of God and also the Spirit of God go therefore and make disciples of all nations people says about a conversion it is not conversion religious conversion but no one can get converted 
unless there is his i his mind is open or his conscience or convicted and it has been redeemed from the darkness in it okay so it is there is no conversion like religious conversion it is actually change of mind repentance and the mind is changed and towards god that is all one god there is no religion religion is a way man's way of accessing to god but god's way is god came down in his son jesus the christ that is the only way and there is no religion under the heaven and above the earth in the world that belongs to god it does not belong to any religion or any idolatrous community but it belongs to one true god that is father son and the holy spirit so go, go therefore and make disciple of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit so in the triune name of god everyone has to everyone has to accept the trinity of god okay when they become a child of god in the apostolic benedictions so everywhere you see the god head is used as a triune that means the love of the father and the grace of the lord jesus christ and the fellowship or the communion of the holy spirit this is the perfect blessings and benediction if you say there are religion no religion has this kind of blessings of love grace and fellowship with god so in the apostolic benedictions let me read out the passover of the jews was at hand that is uh, first two corinthian 13 14 we will have to read that one so that is the benedictions so the may the love of the father and the grace of our lord jesus christ and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with all this is the one so triune he here also the his deity is seen in relation to the life and ministry of jesus christ again so point number 1 jesus was conceived by the holy spirit which we have already seen luke 135 and the angel answered her the holy spirit will come upon you and the power of the most high will overshadow you and therefore the child to be born will be called holy the son of god okay so that is jesus was conceived by the holy spirit and he was anointed by the holy spirit for service acts 10:38 how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy spirit and with power he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil and god was with him so that is why jesus said the finger of god is otherwise called the holy spirit if you are being driven of the evil spirit that means the kingdom of god is in your midst okay so that is one aspect of it then he was led by the holy spirit who jesus christ then jesus was led by the holy spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil so he was also led by the spirit of god so after the temptation 40 40 days are over he came back in the power of the holy spirit he was led initially after the temptation is over he came in the power of the holy spirit and he performed all the miracles in the power of the holy spirit for 3 years and they so that is the proof that jesus the son of god he is lord god he is attested as one savior of the entire mankind one savior of the entire mankind and he is the author and the perfecter of our faith and he is the captain of salvation there is no other name given under heaven and above the earth to be called upon for salvation so depend on the holy spirit and have fellowship with the spirit of god and also point number 4 jesus was crucified in the power of the holy spirit see how much he was crucified in the power how much more will the blood of christ who through the eternal 
spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So he was crucified in the power of the Holy Spirit. Fifth one, he was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. Romans 8.11 it says, In the spirit of him who raised him, who raised Jesus from the dead, dwells in you. He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. See, it is Jesus Christ, it says, he brought forth from the dead. So we should not mistake it. Jesus also has told us, I have been given power by Father to lay it down and to take it back again. But many says, Father brought him back to life and the Spirit of God raised him. And also we should know that Jesus has the power to lay it down and to take it back. So here, Spirit of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he was raised. And for sixth point, Jesus gave commandments to the apostles and to the church through the Holy Spirit. That is Acts 1-2. Until the day when Jesus was taken up, after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. So in the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus gave commandments to the apostles. So in the power of the Holy Spirit, he talked to them about the kingdom of God for 40 days after his resurrection. So the kingdom of God is an essential topic there. So if Jesus needed to depend solely upon the Holy Spirit during his life and ministry here on earth, can we afford to do less? So without the Spirit of God, we cannot serve the living God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So he is the paraclete, which is a compound meaning. He is our counselor, he is an advocate and who comes along and who abides in us to help us and to serve him. So there are six points we have seen. Jesus was conceived and anointed and led by the Spirit, crucified in the power of the Holy Spirit and raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus gave commandments and also Holy Spirit, the deity is proven. He was omnipresent, he was omnipotent and he was omniscient and he is eternal. So these are the divine attributes. He is co-equal, co-eternal and co-existent with Father and the Son. So this proves the deity of the Holy Spirit. So the part one ends here to in our study of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is God, the third person of one triune God, the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. So this proves that Holy Spirit is God. So you don't have to consider him as an influence or we should not call him as it, but he, he is a person with thought, purpose and action like us. Okay. So he is, he has come and he has been given to you after the day of Pentecostals to be with you and to be a part of your life as a Christian life and in the servitude that we have to serve the people in the power of the Holy Spirit. May, you may be blessed by having the Spirit of God in your service and in your family life, in your personal life. May God bless you. I wish you well in the name of Jesus Christ, having the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.